my name is Gurpreet and I'm uh, I'm a TME for Cloud Native BNG Solution. And today we will be talking about the Cisco Cloud Native BNG, basically showing you a demonstration on that. So we'll see what are the different components uh, which form the solution, how simple it is to connect a new user plane, basically uh, ASA 9K, which we try to connect. What are the main advantages of the solution? And uh, we will also see uh, uh, the matrix visualization, which is the KPI and the performance metric monitoring, which we are trying to simplify with this uh, solution. So how, how easy it is to see all the KPIs and metrics right out of the box. And uh, so what we have as part of this, uh, this demonstration is um, we already have a have a 9k uh, which is uh, already in the in the converged transport network and uh, we have a control plane deployed in a telco cloud so this control plane is actually composed of different microservices so we'll look at those microservices uh, as the first set, uh, first section then we'll go bring up the association which is basically a pfcp association between the between the user plane 9k and the control plane uh, PFCP is the same protocol which is used in 3GPP also. So we are leveraging the same protocol looking towards the convergence. Uh, we'll try to bring up some of the subscribers. Uh, basically, first we'll bring up the IPOE subscriber. Later on, we'll have more subscribers and we'll see, um, you know, the overall monitoring side of things. So one of the things which we are trying to do with Cloud Native BNG is like how can we simplify the overall monitoring for the BNG deployment. And uh, we have a lot of PMs and the KPIs which are already available as part of the solution. So without further ado, I will... So we already have... Uh... So as part of this, we already have the, uh, you know, the control plane, CNBNG control plane already deployed in SMI, and SMI stands for Subscriber Microservices Infrastructure. This is the same infrastructure which can have uh, the BNG 5G core functions as well as the cable functions. We see right now that there are two SMI applications which are deployed in this uh, deployment. We have a common execution environment which is, a, uh, which is providing us the telemetry and the monitoring capabilities and of course our main application which is bng so if you have the other applications which are also here like 5g core applications uh, amf smf etc you can see all those over here in the same deployment including the cnbr which is cable now what we have done as part of the part of the development is that what we did is we split up the bng function into several containers and uh, what it helps is that you can scale them up indep independently. You can uh, basically, uh, you know, patch them, upgrade them, uh, and all this can be done independent of each other. Like uh, so, this is this is the main advantage uh, which you get out of the cloud native. One of the pod which needs to be highlighted here is actually the op center pod, and what it is providing is basically a single window to uh, manage, operationally manage this BNG. It basically provides the net conf interface with a lot of Yang models which we have. And it is, it is also providing a CLI interface as well as the REST conf interface. So if, you, if we connect to that op center over here, you can see that it looks more like a, like a router interface. So what we are trying to do with CNBNG is that the network engineers who are not so familiar with the Kubernetes, what they can do is uh, they can manage the entire BNG operation to the center and you get models for all these things. So they need not worry about the Kubernetes deployment, services, Helm charts, and all those things. They can just define the subscriber profile services like they used to do before. And you get the models for all these things, both config as well as the operational models. So and they can also define the features for the subscriber, including the pools definition. So one of the thing which we are trying to do with this, uh, one other thing which we are doing is uh, how can we do the whole IP address management centralized, right? So 
that piece is also you can define over here. You can see what are the charts or the repo Helm chart repositories being deployed. What is the status of the core BNG uh, containers or the microservices from this op center? And like I said, you can get this through the models as well. So now for this, what we'll do is we'll try to bring up a PFCP association between the 9k user plane and the control plane so currently as you can see there are no uh, no association or no peers exist only the it's only the radius connection which is being shown here so what we'll do is we'll try to bring up the pfcp association from the 9k and to connect a 9k is basically super easy you can do it either through ztp or uh, you know so here we are starting the Wireshark first, just to see what is happening in the background. And you can, what I was saying was you can do it through ZTP or you can, you know, apply, uh, push the uh, configuration to the net count. Basically it is just a two line where you say, what is your, uh, your IP, what is the peer IP? And there you have the connection already being set up as soon as, uh, you know, uh, apply the the relevant config so you get the association active and we are using as i was saying pfcp protocol for this so just uh, bits on pfcp so it's it's a protocol defined by 3gpp between the smf and the upf it's called n4 interface which is uses this protocol so what we do with this pfcp interface is uh, we program the subscriber features like service enforcement, PBR, HTTP redirect, and all those kind of rules get uh, programmed on the 9K. So you create the subscriber interface on the 9K. So, and so the application of all those features happens on the user plane itself. Although the control plane is defining the, another thing is the GTP interface, which actually sends all the subscriber control packets, be it DSAP Dora or even the uh, PPPOE PADX packet. So now, as you can see here, the association is up and the same thing we can see in the, in the dashboard, which is inbuilt. We'll go through that dashboard in the last section. And you can see here is basically the PFCP association message, which is being, uh, which is being used uh, between the, between the user plane and the control plane. And you can see uh, the heartbeat messages, which we start, which is just to manage the, uh, the association. Now we'll try to bring up the subscribers and we'll, the control path will follow the green line and all the red boxes will be touched on. So if we look over here from the spirant, we'll try to start some of the IPOE subscriber sessions. And so while these subscriber sessions are coming up, we already have the Wireshark running and uh, you can see that uh, the DHCP messages which are getting exchanged between the user plane and the control plane, like I was mentioning before, this actually uses the GTP uh, interface to transport those messages between the user plane and the control plane. Now the programming of the subscriber features and all happens through the PFCP interface. You can, you can see that the PFCP session establishment request and the PFCP session establishment response in turn will be sent from the 9K to the control plane. So after waiting for some time, we can see all the 4,000 subscriber sessions are actually bound. And uh, you can get that information through the models. You can get it from the CLI. You can look that in the dashboard as well. So we can see that we have the user plane connected. We have got subscriber sessions already working. So one of the another thing which we can see over here is that because it's a centralized control plane, you can actually get the subscriber information and that subscriber 
information you can get it like uh, we are trying to filter it from the mac so we take the mac of the subscriber from spiren and we look up the mac uh, and you can look it up just you know if you know the uh, the mac you don't need to know basically which user plane this subscriber is on and you can actually see what all are the features being applied for that particular subscriber of course so this is for this mac uh, you can see below the user plane also and you can see what is the ip being allocated to the subscriber and finally you can also see what are the plan policies being applied so this is a 20 mbps plan which is enabled for this particular subscriber so you can get all the features over here um, now the another thing which we are doing uh, with this is as i was telling before is how can we wireline ip address management remains a challenge so how can we do uh, something with the centralized control plane? So we have got uh, IP address manager, IPAM built into the control plane. And what it essentially provides is that you can create the pools, you can create smaller pools, allocate and assign them dynamically to the, uh, to the user plane. So the control plane dynamically allow, assigns those. You can even have a static pools. Now coming to the last section of this that uh, about the subscriber monitoring. And as I was saying before that, we are trying to simplify the overall subscriber monitoring here by providing hundreds of and possibly more metrics and the KPI is going forward with this solution. So what we have got is there is a Grafana visualization tool which is already there uh, which, where these uh, metrics and the kpis we can see all those metrics and kpis but you need not uh, limit yourself to that this can be easily connected to the other kpis so other dashboards so what i have got here is uh, some more subscriber sessions working and uh, one more user plane connected so we got two user planes connected and sixteen thousand subscriber sessions overall um, and these subscribers are actually divided as a dual stack or the single stack. So maybe you want to plan for V6 migration. So this is probably one of the indicator. How many are the dual stack V6 capable subscriber? Of course, the licensing information. And then uh, how how is the accounting piece working? Right? Are there any issues with the with the accounting? Then how many days SMI has been healthy for and how are the application and the infrastructure parts are actually working uh, just to give the health of the system. Here, these are the direct revenue generating subscribers, IPOE and PPPOE PTAs. Then we have the wholesale subscribers, uh, like how many were max current, like a lack and LNS subscribers here. So you get all this information right out of the box. Uh, uh, and this is exactly where we can see how are the subscriber sessions distributed across different user planes. So in our case, we have got two user planes, 9K1 and 9K2. And you can see both IPOE sessions, 8K and 4K on these sessions, and the PPPOE sessions only on the 9k2 which are 4k so essentially what it gives you a picture is that if you have hundreds of user planes you can see all those user planes how is the subscriber session and count on each of them maybe probably de design probably going forward like how can you expand uh, capacity in certain regions so you can get that now this is where you get the information about how is the subscriber experience been from a respective BNG? So let's say a region specific subscribers are getting some issues. Uh, and you, whether the success rate is fine or not. This is where we get all the radius related information, um, whether success or failure, and you can get like which radius is performing worse versus which radius are performing better comparatively. Finally, uh, like here, we can see what is the, since this is composed of a lot of microservices, so we can see that what is the 
scalability graph for those microservices or this is again related to the cluster performance like whether they scale to highest or scale to the lowest level so this is exactly where you see all your active alerts so basically if your radius accounts are not there or your radius is not performing properly then you can get that information and uh, you can also get some of the threshold crossing alerts like uh, how is your uh, accounting messages are being stuck like how many should be stuck before you raise an alarm and all those things